sodium, potassium, iodine, fluorine, polonium, lanthanum, and so on. We do hear the name of so many elements in our daily lives. However, have you ever wondered what the total number of elements the world has? Well, there are a total of 118 elements known to the world. Out of these 118 elements, 92 are naturally occurring, and the remaining are synthetically produced. These digits, 118 is a huge number. Given the huge number of the elements, there often feels a need to systematically organize the elements, in the form of a table or a sphere, even a graph. Thus, let us list down possible reasons for which we should classify the elements. 1. To study the properties, behavior, and nature of elements and their chemistry separately. 2. To understand the known facts of chemistry. 3. To know the properties of the elements that are yet to be discovered. 4. To compare the properties of the elements. Now, isn't that the fact that different elements must have different properties? However, some elements have similarities in physical and chemical properties. Thus, as an act of systematizing, the researchers and scientists of those days arranged the elements based on the similarity in their physical and chemical properties. So, what was the first ever type of classification? Okay, so, the first type of classification of elements was into metals and nonmetals, and this was done by Antoine Lavoisier. Let us start the tale from the work of Doberiner. In the earliest phase of the 19th century, a scientist named Doberiner observed a periodic trend among certain elements for the first time. Doberiner thus arranged the elements in a group of three based on the similarity in their chemical and physical properties. Based on his observation, he wrote his law as, the atomic weight of the element in the middle is nearly equal to the atomic weights of the other two elements in the triad. Let us now check examples of his triads. Lithium, sodium, and potassium were arranged in a group of three. The atomic weight of lithium is 6.941U, and that of potassium is 39.0983U. The average atomic weight of first and third elements, that is, lithium and potassium, is 23.01965, which is approximately equal to the atomic weight of sodium. Let us now look at the next example. Calcium, strontium, and barium were arranged in a group of three. The atomic weight of calcium is 40.078U, and that of barium is 137.327U. The average atomic weight of first and third elements, that is, of calcium and barium is 88.7025U, which is nearly equal to the atomic weight of strontium that is, 87.62U. Now here's the third example. Chlorine, bromine, and iodine were arranged in a group of three. The atomic weight of chlorine is 35.453, and that of iodine is 126.9048. The average atomic weight of first and third elements, that is, chlorine and iodine, are 81.1789, which is nearly equal to the atomic weight of bromine, that is, 79.904. Even though Doberiner's law of triad made an appeal to the world, it was dismissed. Do you know why Doberiner's law of triad was dismissed? There was because all elements did not show this trend in his arrangement. In 1865, an English chemist, John Newland, proposed a law. He arranged the elements in increasing order of their atomic weights and observed that there is a repetition in the properties of every eighth element with the first. Let us now visualize his octave of elements. The elements from left to right are hydrogen, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur chlorine, potassium, and calcium. H is the first element, and F is the eighth element concerning it. 
Thus, fluorine shows similarity in the properties with H. Similarly, Na shows similarity with Li, Mg with Be, Si, and C. P with N, S with O, etc. He received the Davy Medal in 1887 from the Royal Society of London. However, his law was dismissed as well, because the trend given in his law was true up to calcium only. Alright, this was about Doberiner's law of triad and Newland's law of the octave.